the inner child, again, as I said, from a subconscious standpoint, you know, what happens is our psyche retains the emotions that were experienced in childhood. Okay? They're still there, those emotions. And, but again, just very, most people are unaware that their inner child exists. And again, as I said, they're activated by current events and the lack of awareness of that child is going to lead to behavioral, emotional, and relationship difficulties. Yes, it is a heartbreaking picture. Connecting, right, can help us to lead to understanding why. Learning to connect with that child, we understand, again, answering why. I'm going to sound like a broken record today, but I want you to fully understand this. Again, the why. Why do I engage in these destructive behaviors, emotions, and thinking? Early childhood development. As you guys all know, you know what neural pathways are. You realize that they are the creation of, of messaging uh, or message highways, you know, million, billion that are in, in the brain. Uh, they consist of our thoughts, you know, uh, our beliefs, our behavior. And of course, the stronger the pathway is, the more consistent the behavior. So once again, early childhood trauma and neglect is negatively going to influence those pathways of development. You guys know this. You all understand it. This is all a setup for what we're going to be talking about. And but this, the thing here, what we get with many clients, is they're not looking back on their childhood. They're not looking back to some of the things that went wrong that shape their neural pathways today. They're just thinking to themselves, this is the way I am. This is me. It's the way I'm hardwired. And there's something I can do about it. I can't change. And that, again, is erroneous because they can change. You've probably seen this. This is a, a PET scan of a brain that shows you a you know, normal childhood brain. I believe this is a four-year-old uh, that goes back on the left-hand side. And then you can see the changes here for a child who grew up in an environment. And it was that orphanage study that was done in Romania uh, where you can see the damage temporal lobes, there, there, there is real destruction that is done to the brain when we are dealing with trauma and neglect in our lives. And not just, you know, again, very much so in childhood development, but even as we get older, we're continuing with this. And this is something, again, just to demonstrate and prove there are issues. And that's why sometimes you kind of, you wonder why, how come a client cannot grasp the sense of what empathy is. Well, look at that image over on the right. There are gonna be things that are just going to be missing. That doesn't mean they still can't learn, right? It's just gonna be a lot more difficult. And that goes on in many different aspects of our lives as adults. So let's look at the consequences of trauma and neglect. And even if you have comments, I'd love to hear those what's going on. If you don't agree with me, I'd love to hear what's happening there. So again, again, the constant exposure, you know, that chronic of that chronic trauma is going to cause issues such as attachment disorders. Okay, and I'm not going to run into all of that with you. You understand what those are. It's going to be a difficult time emotionally regulating. Now, the thing about emotional regulation, okay, we're not just talking about kid who had the tantrum and can't regulate mood, but maybe the kid who can't get himself out of that depressed state or can't control the anxiety aspect of things. That was, there are many different aspects of emotional regulation. Maybe can't find a sense of joy or happiness because he has more of a negative affect that he deals with or she deals with. And dissociation. There's a lot of dissociation that goes on when it comes to the addictive brain. Because again, the altered consciousness and of course the impaired memory. Now I had a client, I still don't quite understand how to figure this one out. He swears that he cannot, he had a sister who was two years older. 
He does not have a single memory about his sister until he was 16 years old. 16 years old. That was his first memory. And what it was, was her, him, her giving him a, a joint, a marijuana cigarette. He had no memories of her before then. And he said that she was around because parents always said that she was around. Just can't remember what that was. I have another one, another client who says he doesn't have any memories of his mother until he's almost eight years old. So again, yeah, you're right. The brain is protecting from trauma. Like I said, he can't get there. He's done EMDR. You know, we're just kind of at a, a loss with, all, with some of that. But anyway, again, sometimes we're going to be that way with our client. So what are some of the other negative consequences here that we deal with? Self-worth. Okay, we see it in probably 98% of the cases. People come in with a very, very low self-esteem. As I said to you before, earlier, right? The negative narrative that they tell themselves, you know, it, the idea that, you know, it's like, well, we don't come out of the womb with these negative thoughts about ourselves. Something has to happen, you know? Um, no, the trauma that the client had did not relate to his sister. Um, also, behavioral control, as we said, difficult controlling impulses, remember what I said? Anxiety increases compulsiveness, increases bad decision making. Could really disrupt the sleep. We see that. How many of you have clients who have many sleep problems? Okay, I see that quite often that goes on. And also cognitive ability to focus, learning, processing new information, you know, being able to plan, being able to make decisions and not be, you know, parallel, parallel, paralyzed by those, or even after they make a decision that they're not, you know, in distress because they think they made the wrong one. We see it quite often with all of these clients. And again, if we finish up on the consequences, again, cortisol, havoc, right? One of the body's main stress hormones. It does some really good stuff. It's really, we need it. Um, help bypass that. But what happens, bypasses the rational thinking. Then it focuses on survival if you have too much here. And what happens, we see often is kids shutting out the fear. They shut down the anxiety. They don't want to feel anxious. Not all of them. There are some who do. They're very anxious kids. But in many cases, they're just shutting that off. And as I said, some of them don't realize they're anxious. Others, they struggle with that. So what do they do? They turn to distractions to forget or to soothe.